So we have an interesting one today, a good one, a tough one, one that I'm really gonna need your guys' help with here, seriously, to kind of compile this and wrap this all up here. So again, stick with me through this video, wrap up and absorb everything I'm gonna talk about here, because I'm seriously, no fluff, gonna need your guys' help. And what we're gonna be talking about is the Epos H3 gaming headset. So first off, whenever you pop this headset open out of the box, the presentation, the packaging is awesome. I know we're not buying a box, but I love when companies go the extra mile. And again, they're just wrapped in this foam right here. Very nice and secure. Again, I know we're not buying a box, but I love it when companies take this extra step. Other than that, you can get your splitter for PC as far as mic and everything. You'll get your straight 3.5 for console. And this cable right here is braided, nice, Durable cable, but also still very flexible. It's not one of those heavy duty, you know, not gonna bend up on you type of cables. Then of course, you're gonna get your paperwork over here, but like I stated, it connects by 3.5, so you really don't need that. So as you just saw, it does connect by 3.5, so it's gonna work on every single platform, every console, PC, mobile phone, pen and if you got a 3.5 jack right there, but pretty much the majority of every single platform. But you all know where we have to start, right? Because no matter how great of a deal it is, how great it sounds or anything, if it's not comfortable, we're going to take them right off. So starting with the comfort on the H3. Well, looking at it right here, it's all plastic. It is entirely plastic. It really is, except whenever you extend your headband out, you got that metal reinforced right there. It has nice clicks, as you can hear. And it holds its position really nice. I almost got to give it a good force right there and it's so uh, to close. So it's actually going to hold its position. It's not going to accidentally adjust on you. As far as uh, swivel, you have a little bit going in and out. As you can see, plenty right there. And then your ear cups go in and out as well. Now, as far as ear pads and headband right here, the ear pads, you have this nice, what do you call that? Like, I don't know. It's such a nice fabric. Let me bring it over here if you guys can see a little bit better. Nice, very soft suede, I guess we'd call that. And then on the inside, you have more or less like a cloth, a sports material cloth, as you can see, and that's gonna let it breathe a bit more. So really nice. Again, pleather on the outside to lock the sound. Nice suede-ish right there, and then that cloth in there. Now, as far as these ear cushions here, they're probably looking a little bit smaller, if you can see right here. It's not really the cushion itself, it's really just the inside right there. It looks a little bit smaller, and kind of for me, what I do is I kind of take my ear, tuck it in there, and then set it in. And I'm not getting pinched or anything like that. But again, just kind of keep, if you got gigantic ears, this might be an issue for you, because again, the insert is a little bit smaller, but for me, perfectly fine. Yes, you can also replace the cushions, but they are on their own little bracket, as you just saw and heard them snap into place right there. So you're not gonna be able to slap any old ear cushion on there, but uh, I'm guessing through Epos, you can buy replacement ones through them. As far as the headband, fully pleather, going all the way around. Nice little gap right on the top there. As you can see, it's pretty plush, and then a little space up there, gonna alleviate that initial pressure right on the top of your head. But all in all, nice and plush across the entire deal. So I'm gonna roll right into build before we even wrap up the comfort there, which I'm sure you can kind of round up yourself. Again, how I mentioned this headset is pretty much completely plastic minus the reinforced headband right there. It's incredibly lightweight. It really is. Let me pull out the scale here for you guys. Slap the headset on here. What are we going to get? As you can see, 274 grams. That is without the cable, but again, the cable is super light. But headset itself, mic attached, 274 grams. So again, right in line with that comfort we just talked about, it's an incredibly lightweight headset. Yes. The majority of it is plastic, but I can stretch it out. I can twist it up and I'm not getting really worried about it. Now, there are some interesting connections on here. Again, it's going from the headset. That's where we're getting our rocking from. And then this bracket going here into the arm, which is where we're getting that little bit of swivel from. So it's different from what we see in a lot of headsets. Does that make me scared? Nah, because again, I can stretch it up. And again, whenever you're twisting or anything like that, you have all of this leverage on those arms right there. And again, the plastics, saying lightweight, you might be thinking, hmm, cheap, really not. I mean, it feels incredibly solid, very durable, very quality plastics in it. You all probably heard me say in many of my headset videos, I will take an all plastic headset all day long to again, be lightweight and comfortable on the head. Yeah, I love quality, heavy duty, you know, just these metal headsets. I love those, you know, cause again, you have that quality, that reassurance there. But still, I would prefer a lightweight, all plastic headset that's built right. And I feel like this is built right. And as far as comfort, 110% stinking cozy, without a doubt. Whenever you put these guys on your head, you seriously like, it's perfect. The clamping force 
is medium right there. I don't feel like they're gonna fall off. If I shake my head, they do budge a little bit. As far as with glasses on, perfectly comfortable. On top of my head, you know, I got a bald head. So if it's sitting on my head right here, totally comfortable. Not pinching, no pressure points, no nothing. The clamping force is perfectly fine. And then again, with the combination of the build and that comfort, wow. Very awesome on the head here. All right, so now features and functions on the Epos H3. Well, it's pretty much a bare bones headset. Again, it connects by 3.5 right on the bottom. You have your flip up and flip down microphone and that's how you mute it as well. On the other ear cup, you have a little volume wheel over here. But now going right in line with those simple features and functions of this headset, using it on every single platform, which is what I tested it on from mobile to PS5, Series X, Nintendo Switch, PC, and Mac using it on different situations, all of them, whether it be music, gaming, again, mobile gaming, mainly Call of Duty mobile, and then again, all the consoles, even editing a video on my Macs right there. And again, the great thing, like I stated before, is it's straight 3.5, plug and play, no software, no nothing needed, simply plug it in and you're good to go. Again, that's the great thing about the simplicity of it here. But talking about the sound, Let's talk about that. And again, we're talking across every device because you got that sound that we're about to talk about, which is spoiler, good sound. You got it on every single device. So the Epos H3 is using 40 millimeter drivers at a frequency range of 10 to 30,000. So a little bit more expanded than you see is from our traditional gaming headset, right? And let me tell you what, the sound on these guys, wow, it was something special. It really was. It was like, just to kind of wrap it up here and kind of, Give you a quick example. It's like a gaming headset mixed with a headphone kind of thrown into there. You know what I mean? Because you had that clarity, crystal clear clarity, but you had that bump and you had that rumble, right? Like I was playing Call of Duty with this and just a score streak. I forget what score streak was flying over and it started rumbling. Like you just felt it, but it was crystal clear. It wasn't muddy and <laughs> jumbly and everything. You know what I'm talking about, right? If you had that headset and you got that really just action-packed sequence going on and it takes over everything and it's done that didn't do this I was like when i felt it start rumbling i'm like what the heck man i still hear the guy over here it was awesome it was so cool right because again it had potent highs not screechy highs the highs definitely did its thing right there but again they weren't screechy okay the bass it wasn't like muddy overdone beats bass but when you needed bass it gave you bass it gave you awesome bass because again, it was immersive bass when it needed it. Not every old footstep or every random thing was full of bass. Like the wind, you know, comes by and it just like, blah, you all know what I'm talking about, right? Talking about me playing Battlefield. The wind will go by in the environment. It just turns this muddy, just gross bass wind. It didn't do that here. But then if a tank comes by in Battlefield or something, you felt that. It was so cool, it really was. Now I will say as far as the sound of this, it is a little, I don't wanna say a little more, but I did notice a little bit more mids in there, right? It definitely rounded out. Talking about the highs not really screeching. I felt the mids in there a little bit more, not as much as say Black Shark, uh, the Black Shark mids that I've spoke about before, a little bit bass, a little bit mid heavy over there. You didn't get that here. Again, it was balanced, but again, I did feel it kinda just round out a little bit there, but it worked out. It worked out in every game and in every situation, editing videos listening to music, any genre, and playing games, any type of game. First person shooter, great detail, great immersion, right? Story game, again, great detail, great immersion. Usually you get one or the other. Like this headset's great for FPS. This headset's great for story. It's not that common where you find that one and done that's gonna cover it all. This guy really did it and the sound, wow. I, I can't say it enough, the sound on these are stinking awesome. All right, so we are now gonna test the microphone on the Epos H3. Right now, you are still hearing through my microphone, not this one yet. I wanna just give you that comparison. So again, my microphone here, and now we're gonna go live with the Epos H3, again with our flip down microphone. Okay, so we are recording and we are now using the Epos H3 microphone. As you can see right here, going on OBS. My OBS is actually cranked up a little bit right there, so I'm gonna change it. There we go, that'll bounce it out a little bit more. We're still cracking into the yellow, so it's definitely picking up pretty good here. Now again, this is straight plugged and played right into the laptop here, and this is what you're hearing with the microphone. The microphone is moldable, not detachable, and this is what it sounds like. So again, pretty cool flip up. 
flip down, you get a little click in the ear, no sound notifications or anything, but you do get a click in the ear, so you are pretty much aware that it is muted, but heck, if it's not in front of your face, it's muted, you know what I mean? But all in all, this is a microphone on the Epos H3. One little side note here that I wanted to chime in on after doing that microphone test, I'm gonna let you know, even while I was talking to the microphone or my AC's running its fan from this light or whatever, it really blocks out a lot of the sound. I know that's kind of backtracking the sound, but I just clicked into my head right there. Again, with the pleather out there, and then again, these velour-like type top or whatever, and then the cloth in there, you might be thinking, well, it's gonna kind of bleed out a little bit, you know what I mean? I'm gonna hear some of the outside stuff. You really don't. I mean, it truly blocks off a lot of that sound right there. Like, I didn't hear any of that basic environment sound, you know. As far as my voice, I heard it a little bit, but nothing crazy. So again, sound isolation is pretty stinking nice on these as well. Okay. So this is where I need your help, right? Did you stick through the entire video? We talked about everything right there. It sounds pretty stinking good. It doesn't sound pretty stinking good. It is pretty stinking good. It's very good. It's an awesome headset. The sound, the comfort, the build, everything. The microphone, it's all good for $120. Okay, so this is where I need your help, right? $120. It's good, like I just stated, it's amazing, right? Does that just straight up justify it? We're talking a bare bones headset right here. Plug and play 3.5, no fluff, no crazy features on it or anything. 120 bucks. Okay, we can go on Amazon, type in gaming headset, see our com comparisons, right? Logitech G7, so 330 bucks, wireless. You know what I mean? Corsair H60, 50. Right? The Epo Sennheiser Game 1, 139. That'd probably be a fair comparison right there. Um, Corsair Virtuoso, 159. So on and so forth. You get a lot there, right? And that's kind of where I go, right? Let's think about that. With the comparison, some of the ones you'd put us up against, maybe Razer Black Shark V2s, right? $60 headset. How about the one we just covered? The Steel Series Prime. The wired, plug and play. $100, 40 millimeter drive circuit range of 10 to 40,000. Now these are tuned much different than these, right? These are more potent towards the highs. I stated great FPS headset right here. But this is where I need your help again, guys. Seriously, I'm not, I'm not joking here, right? You might be like, ah, oh, this guy just doesn't wanna, you know, say it's good or bad. I say it's good. Does it justify $120? What do you think? I wanna see that 100 bucks. If it was that a hundred bucks right there, just before breaking that limit of over a hundred dollars, you know what I mean? Like, I'd be, I'd say, go get this right now. At 120 bucks, I kind of say, well, just take a second and just see what else is out there. That's the way I take it. You know what I mean? If you buy this for 120 bucks right now, I think you're gonna love it. I know you're gonna love it. You know what I mean? Like, I stink and love it. Like for sure, you know. If it was at a hundred bucks, I'd be like, yeah, go scoop it up right now. I'm not too sure what I'd peed it up against. You know what I mean? But at 120 bucks, I want you just to look at your options. And again, maybe not help me with the conclusion of this, but help yourself. You know what I mean? Go through this video, wrap it up, you know, take in everything we talked about. Is that what you're looking for? Is that gonna justify the price? If so, complete win. Like hands down on any and every platform. I give it a win. I'd love to see that 100 bucks. I still think it's worth 120, but again, maybe that's just me being a cheapo. I love this headset. It's stinking awesome. So please, seriously, let me know down in the comments what you think about it. Do you think it justifies the price? Do you think it should be a little bit cheaper? Again, uh, no fluff, I'm just curious. I need some help right here. This is my first Epos headset I'm covering on the channel, so I'm not real familiar with their pricing. I know they used to be Sennheiser. They're not with Sennheiser anymore, so did they get a little bit of that taste of Sennheiser pricing, you know? Again, I'm just, just curious here. I want to hear what you guys think as well. But again, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this review on the Epos H3. I hope it helped you out if you're looking at this headset or heck, any new headset. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to some future tech videos. Hey, I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye now.